Vamos carajo, brothers and sisters, boys and team. Welcome back to another episode of South Stand Signings, the series, of course, where we go through everything happening in and around the world of Leeds United. And we have a little talk about it. And much has progressed since yesterday. There were a hell of a lot of new players linked with Leeds United. There were a hell of a lot of players that were linked with moving away from Leeds United. And a lot has transpired over the past 24 hours. So let's not waste any more of your time. Let's get straight into the meat of the action. But quickly, before we do start this video, 75% of you are not subscribed. Would you, Adam and Eve, it. If you could please help support me, support you by dropping a subscription. If you like the channel, if you don't like the content, then don't worry. But if you do, if you do like the daily transfer leads videos, if you like the videos on the channel at all, and you could help me out by subscribing, that'd be really much appreciated. But let's not waste any more of your time. Let's get back into the video. And the first story coming out of the last 24 hours is that man, Colin Dagba, title winner admitted from plans as club try to sell Leeds and Arsenal transfer target. That is right. Leeds and Arsenal are at loggerheads once again with another transfer target. This time he's not coming from uh, from Leeds United. And ironically, there's another transfer target that Leeds and Arsenal are also at loggerheads with, but we will get into that a little bit later. But when we were talking the past couple of weeks, I'm pretty sure 95% of you have been saying I want another defender, whether that be a left back, a centre back, any any kind of form most of you guys really saying left back and maybe Colin Dagba is the man. I know he's a natural right back. He can maybe feature a little bit at left back. So can Rasmus Christensen. So you can maybe say Christensen will have more of a role to play at left back. Maybe Colin Dagba will. However, Colin Dagba has been left out of the side, out of their first team training plans. And maybe Leeds could use this as an incentive to push them forward to signing him. La Parisian says a defender linked with Premier League duo and Arsenal and Leeds United going to be left out of their first team group for pre-season training. This is big. This is is massive. As President Nasser Al-Khalifi put it, after a hugely underwhelming season for one of the football's most expensively assembled times, it's the end of the glitter, aka the end of the glitz and the glamour. Goodbye, flashy bling bling. Hello, a new era of self-sustainability overseen by Christoph Gaiata, a coach with a superb track record in regards to constructing teams with greater sum of their parts. Probably a reason why they were also linked to to someone like Calvin Phillips who's not really a flashy bling bling kind of player and someone who is an absolute workhorse and could really feature for their side very well as part of their new rebuild. However instead of him going over there maybe we could be getting one of their players as part of our rebuild in Colin Dagba. He's been left out of the squad. It does look like he is out of their side. Look there's no two ways about it. I don't see him staying at PSG over the summer for next season. The two most likely clubs that have been to sign him are Arsenal and Leeds so far we are the two that have showed the most interest of course once this news is broken maybe a lot of other clubs may come in and throw their hat in the mix but so far it is Leeds and Arsenal that are really gunning for him no pun intended. And would you want him? That's the question. Do you think we'll get him? Do you think we have any need for a right back? I don't really see any legs with this one to be honest. I don't really see us going in for him that massively but Hey, your guys' opinion may differ. Let me know what you guys think about this one down in the comment section down below. And speaking of Arsenal, Arsenal, of course, put a bid in for Rafinha the other day. And Leeds United have been left baffled by Arsenal's behaviour with their bid. That is right. Apparently, when Arsenal made the bid, it was so low that it actually sent shockwaves through the Ellen Road boardroom. It was immediately rejected at Ellen Road for apparently coming nowhere near the asking price of £60 million, with Smith saying Arsenal's opening bid for Rafinha was so low that Leeds Chiefs were left baffled. In writing for the YEP, he compared this to the entitlement show by the European or rather the top six clubs when it came to the European Super League and saying that 
It would not have taken a genius to predict that the very entitlement that raised its ugly head in April 2021 would be seen in a transfer window that threatens to take talent away from Ellen Road, that it only took 12 days of the transfer window for that ugly entitlement to show itself. Now, whether you're saying that's entitlement, whether you're saying that it's part of a, a bartering with Leeds United, you know, you want to hit them low with a low ball so that we'll probably lower our ass price they'll come a bit lower than that then we'll lower it further you know one of those old tricks from arsenal but whatever you want to call it what it is is an absolute disgrace of an opening bid i it is rumored to be around 35 37 40 million pounds ridiculously low i mean coming on come on man what are they smoking over there at the emirates man this is coming from the same club that paid 40 million and one pounds for luis suarez man absolutely ridiculous scenes <laughs> and I don't think that move will be on any time soon. However, a move that could be on for Rafinha over to another ch another London club is Rafinha over to Chelsea. And Chelsea are apparently not just willing to throw in a better financial odd than Arsenal, but also sweeten the pot with a player. That is right. Chelsea offer one to way winger to Leeds in a swap deal to be Arsenal to the race for Rafinha. Chelsea are reportedly considering offering Hakim Ziyech to Leeds in a swap deal for Rafinha. Arsenal are said to be readying a second bid for the Brazilian after their opening offer was immediately dismissed as it fell way below Leeds' valuation. But a number of other clubs are said to be interested, including Rafinha's preferred option Barcelona, as well as Tottenham and now Chelsea. The Athletics' David Ornstein claimed on Thursday that Thomas Tuchel is very keen on the 25-year-old with a view to playing him at a wing back at Stamford Bridge next season. Would you believe it? All the stick under the sun that Jesse Marsh got for playing Rafinha at wing back. He got absolutely pelted. And now you're telling me a Champions League winning manager, one of Europe's most revered managers, uh, an elite, <laughs> elite manager for a... Uh, Champions League side is coming out saying he wants to play my wing back. This is absolutely crazy. The way this story of Rafinha and Leeds and Marsh and everything surrounding the club just seems to be unfolding is it is like a sitcom. You wouldn't be able to write this stuff. Um not that you wouldn't be able to write sitcoms. Most of them probably are pretty easy to write. But you know what I mean. Ornstein said Chelsea present Champions League football, but they're still getting their recruitment plans together. They also, as I understand it, would quite like to play him at wing back. I'm not sure if he, Rafinha, would want that. And now CBS Sports Ben Jacobs claims that Chelsea could offer Hakim Ziyech in exchange for Rafinha, with the Whites said to be very interested in the Moroccan. Don't be surprised if Chelsea advance their interest if they bring Hakim Hakim Ziyech into the equation because my understanding from talking to lead sources separate to Rafinha is that Ziyech should he leave Chelsea has been a player on their radar so there might just be a possibility to do some business with Rafinha coming one way and Ziyech being given to Leeds because Leeds don't just want a chunk of money for Rafinha to the tune of 55 to 60 million potentially they would love to have a ready-made replacement and there are a few ready-made replacements which we will get into in a second however Hakim Ziyech Ziyech, walk with me, talk with me, boys. What are we saying here? Are you taking Hakim Ziyech? Are you taking Hakim Ziyech and around, what are we saying, 50 million pounds, 40 million pounds, 30 million pounds, 20 million pounds? How much do you want added on to Hakim Ziyech? Because it's not going to be a straight swap, obviously. The two are nowhere near the same in valuation. Rafinha is obviously the more in-demand winger. How much are you taking along with Hakim Ziyech? Do you want Hakim Ziyech at Leeds United? Do you think he even has a role to play in the system we have under Jesse Marsh? Do you think he's any better than Gakpo or any of these other players that we've been linked with like Noah Lang, who we could get for the tune of £20 million apparently? I'm not too keen on Hakim Ziyech. He hasn't lit in the Premier League on fire, to be honest. He's been decent. He has been decent. He's certainly nowhere near the quality of a player that Rafinha is. He's certainly nowhere near going to replace the quality that we're going to lose with Rafinha so I'd rather take a gamble on someone like Noah Lang or someone like Gakpa who at least has the potential to 
I know it's very unlikely, but the potential to become better than Rafinha by the time he hits his age, yeah, maybe it's a little bit less proven than someone like Hakim Ziyech, but he has the potential to reach Rafinha or improve upon Rafinha. Let me know what you guys think about this one. Maybe your opinion differs to me, but for me, Hakim Ziyech to Leeds, I'm not 100% too keen on it. I'm not going to lie to you. Now, speaking of another Rafinha replacement, we have been looking at Charles de Catellare. I'm so bad at pronouncing that, but that is one of the men we have have been linked with replacing him with although I'd like to get him even if we keep Rafinha because he can play in that attacking midfield role along with a lot of other positions according to Phil Hay he has come out and said that basically it is clear that these kind of moves are being lined up solely for if the likes of Rafinha leave for big money I don't know why he means if the likes of Rafinha Rafinha is the only attacking player that we are going to lose for big money the two players we're likely to lose are Calvin Phillips and Rafinha so I don't get how losing Calvin Phillips would have any impact on us going for this guy. If it did, and it was just a financial situation, then surely we should be able to spend £30 million and get him in anyway. But it does seem like this is just a replacement. And for me, I don't think that's good enough. I think we've got to be going for one of these one of these attacking players, even if we keep Rafinha. I think we need an attacking midfielder. Let me know what you guys think. Nonetheless, if we lose Rafinha, I think we've got to be going for two of them. Could you imagine getting De Catalere and Gakpa? I mean, maybe I'm getting a bit overexcited. Maybe I'm getting a bit greedy, you could say. But it does look like these kind of moves are only really being lined up if we are to lose Rafinha. Would you want to get another attacking midfielder or slash winger if we keep Rafinha? Do you think that's necessary? Let me know. I think we do need a, a more attacking reinforcements if you do ask me. Speaking of attacking reinforcements, one new man that Leeds United are interested in is Hamed Junior Traore with Jesse Marsh apparently keen on the attacking midfielder to improve his final third options. According to Gazeta della Sport via Sport Witness, Leeds United are one of the teams keen on Hamed Junior Traore. The Sassuolo attacking midfielder is a target for Jesse Marsh, who remains keen to strengthen his side following the relegation scare last season. Leeds United narrowly escaped the threat of getting relegated from the Premier League. The Yorkshire club have moved fast in the transfer window, already spending upwards of £50 million in the current market. Leeds have signed three players in Brendan Aronson, Rasmus Christensen and Mark Roca we have indeed. Traore had a successful season in Serie A scoring seven goals and providing four assists. Sassuolo have the player locked in until 2024 allowing them to dictate terms in the market. The Italian side won at least 25 million euros for the to consider a sale which has alerted Leeds and AC Milan. What is it with AC Milan man? Every single player we have been linked with I mean, 80% of them West Ham have been linked with and 100% of them AC Milan have been linked with. What is going on with this man? Uh, I don't know what what kind of links we have in the boardroom. I know Radrizzani is Italian. Maybe that's got something to do with it. But why are AC Milan going for every single player Leeds are linked with? This is ridiculous at this rate. And speaking of another player Leeds have been linked with, an attacker that I'd really prefer over some someone like Ahmed Juni Traore that is of course this man Gak and they're talking about Arsenal going in for Rafinha again and after their what was a kamikaze of an offer for Rafinha last time apparently Edu is prepared to let Colin Gakpa slip through the reins of Arsenal in order to persuade Leeds United to give Rafinha over to Arsenal. Arsenal are pushing hard to sign Rafinha ahead of next season to enhance the quality of Mikel Ateta's attacking option persuading the Brazilian to join in the club is proving to be a problem alongside agreeing a transfer fee with Leeds. However, the Gunners could sacrifice an old transfer target in order to agree a transfer for Rafinha with Leeds. According to a transfer expert for Brizio Romano, the Whites are interested in Cody Gakpo. Arsenal were heavily linked with the Dutchman ahead of the summer transfer window, but Edu must denounce interest in Gakpo to give Leeds a better chance at signing him who would then be the likely replacement for Rafinha. As, as they touched on earlier with the Hakim Ziyech thing we don't just want money we want to have a ready-made replacement for Rafinha the second we let him go I'm guessing they want it all done before pre-season um, so if we are to let Rafinha go I think it will happen within the next couple of weeks however I'm not sure Barcelona will really pull the trigger for him within the next couple of weeks
weeks. This is why I think we need to make a move for Cody Gakpo or De Catalere or whoever we're going for. We need to make a move now before we actually lose Rafinha because we could end up in a situation where we don't. We end up selling Rafinha a few weeks before the end of the deadline day or maybe in the last week of the transfer window and then end up in a situation where Cody Gakpo is already signed for a new club. He's decided he's not leaving. De Catalere, maybe he's decided he's staying at his club for another season and we're left without being able to get these replacements. Maybe Noah Lang has gone somewhere. I think we need to make one of these signings before we sell Rafinha. And then, hey, worst, uh, worst comes to worst, financially, we end up keeping Rafinha for another season or another six months, which I think is still highly unlikely. And then we've just got even more attacking reinforcements and we're going into next season with an extremely strong squad and we can maybe push up to top half of the table, maybe just scratch in for the Europa Conference League. Who knows? But I think we need to make some moves and I think we need to make some moves now. And then finally, speaking of Arsenal and Rafinha, a lot of stories surrounding that transfer saga today. Nicolas Pepe is apparently pretty much certain to leave the club if they sign Rafinha. Could we go for, for Nicolas Pepe as uh, part of the deal? <laughs> Well, hey, there's worse signings we could make. There certainly are worse signings we could make. That is for sure. But let me know what you guys think about all these moves down in the comment section down below. And let me know which move you want to make. But for now, guys, I will see you all very soon. Au revoir, my brothers and my sisters. <laughs>